two marker, the angle this makes with the axis. Okay, so let's just draw that out and see what we think. You know, there's my Y, my X axis. Um, I can't quite draw this out just yet because it doesn't look quite right, does it? So let's rearrange it first of all. So Y is equal to root 3X take away 5. So I'm going to get it into the form Y equals MX plus C. So all I've done is add root 3X to both sides and taking away 5. So I know it's got a positive gradient, and I know it hits the y-axis at negative 5. So there's negative 5. Positive gradient is probably doing something something like that. And the question is asking for this angle here. Now we should know that gradient is just the, horizontal, the vertical divided by the horizontal. Doing that since about second year. Vertical divided by horizontal. And higher, we're saying that m is equal to tan theta, which isn't a massive stretch, is it? Because tan is opposite over adjacent. So in this case, the vertical is the opposite, and the horizontal is the adjacent. So it's really just, you know, toa, you know, to that, which we began with doing since about third year. So it's not really a new rule, but really thinking about it in this way is slightly, slightly new. So yeah, we need to rearrange, we need to really think about what we're doing, because sometimes if we'd have you know, a line that went this way, we would want to work out this angle, the question would be asking for this angle, but to get that angle, we have to work out this angle first. Okay, so that angle in here would be our opposite, or you know, that would be our n tan theta, and then we do 180 takeaway. So watch out for these ones when it, when it strikes a, a, actually a negative gradient. We've got a nice positive gradient. So what's our O and our A? Well, root 3 is our m, so we're saying that root 3 is equal to tan theta, and you know, if that's just root 3, it's root 3 over 1, isn't it? So that means that this is root 3, and this is our 1. So that comes back to our exact value triangles. So let's have a look. So we've got our 45 and 45, this is the easiest one to remember, 1, 1, root 2. And we've got our 30 and our 60, I'll put the right angles in as well. And I always remember that 30 sits next to the to the root 3. And then I've got a 1 and a 2. And then Pythagoras means that that's right, isn't it? Because root 3 squared is 3, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, so they add up to each other. So if you remember they go together, and you know that's your numbers 1, 2 and root 3, you can't really go too wrong. So if I've got root 3 over 1, so root 3 is my opposite. And 1 is the adjacent. That means I must be looking at this angle here of 60 degrees. So if I was to do inverse tan of root 3 over 1, I would end up with 60 degrees. And yeah, this is as simple as that. Not a bad question for two marks. I think this is the sort of trickier one. Um, so just try and visualise it You know when you do things. I suppose the mistake people might have made here is to instantly assume that it is a negative gradient because we've got a negative in front of the x. However, it needs to be in the form y equals mx plus c. Okay. Uh, the question might have asked for it in radians as well, possibly. So just don't forget that 2 pi radians is 360 degrees. And then you're just, um, you know, what do you divide by? How do you get from 360 to 60? Well, you just divide by 6, 2 pi over 6. So that's pi over 3. You know, so if you want it in radians, you can do that as well. So yeah, hope that's helpful.